In this talk, I will present our recent paper on client-server sessions in linear logic in collaboration with La Alex Cavos and Lars Bjergdahl. First, let me say something about the background. So concurrency is ubiquitous in modern software, and there have been many approaches to modeling concurrency like these. Um, now, without diving into details, these models, while serves their purposes of modeling different styles of concurrency, don't give fundamental logical meanings to programs. This is in sharp contrast with functional programming, where we have the notion of curry held correspondence or proposition as types that establish the tight mapping between programs and proofs. It's not only elegant, but also useful. So naturally, in the, in the early 1990s, Samson Abramsky asked if there is something similar for concurrency, and the answer is widely believed to be a correspondence between some kind of process calculus and proofs in classical linear logic. And this program is commonly known as proofs as processes. Early attempts include Abramsky, Boling, and Scott, who maps CLL proofs to a variant of pi processes. However, under their mapping, processes can only send and receive pairs, which seems not general enough. In 2010, the problem was solved by Kairos and Fanning for intuitionistic linear logic, and later adapted to CLL by Wadler. Finally, Cock et al. borrowed ideas from hypersequent and we now have a tight correspondence between a variant of pi calculus and hypersequent CIL. Now, a, a concrete reason of why we want such a correspondence is that the properties of CIL would apply to the corresponding process calculus automatically, such as deadlock freedom, session fidelity, and live lock freedom. Now, here's the bad news. All these systems have remarkably poor expressivity. They lack, they lack some common concurrency phenomenon such as races. And there are many works on fixing that, and our paper focuses on adding client-server sessions to CLL with the degree of races and non-determinism. First, let's look at Wadler's classical process, or CP in short, that our system is based on. It's a session-typed PyCalculus. The types are formulas in CIL, and programs correspond to proofs in CIL, just as one would expect. We have the multiplicative fragment, including sending and receiving end-of-session signals, sending and receiving channels along channels. We also have the additive fragment, including making and accept choices. We also have the exp exponential fragment, including the question mark and the band, which we will dive in later. Du duality is defined for session types, and dual sessions can talk to each other, and the duality is apparently an, in an involution. Next, we look at the typing rules of CP. Typing judgment will be of this shape, and it means that process P will communicate along channel X according to protocol A or type A. If I have two processes with dual channels, I can connect the channels and get the process. If I, I can also create a forwarding process out of thin air that, have, that exposes two dual channels. If I have a process that communicates along two channels, I can make a process that communicates on only one channel. And the new process will receive the second channel along the first channel, and the type will reflect that. And it's similar for sending channels. There is, however, a notable difference, which is that the formal rule constructs from a single process P, but, but this rule constructs from two separate processes P and Q. After the second channel is outputted along the first channel, the, the, the two processes can continue in parallel. So in some sense, we can say that the former is connected concurrency, while the latter is disjoint concurrency. Uh, following are the three additive fragment rules. If I have a process P that behaves as A, I can make a process that select A out of A and B and then behave as A, which is P. I can, um, similar for B, and if I have two process, um, each behaving A and B, then I can make a process that accepts the choice of A or B and then behave as such. Um, 
We now turn our eyes to exponentials where we improve over previous works. Here are the rules and let's go through them in Waddler's interpretation. So uh, the gist is that BAM means server and question mark means client. The weakening rule represents constructing an empty client profile from, from nothing. The, the, the direction rule is constructing a singleton client pool from only one client. The contraction rule is uh, merging two client pools into one client pool. Promotion is producing a replicative, replicative server from uh, a, a process that will be, re that will be replicated. And uh, yes. So that sounds all right until we have to construct concrete examples. Suppose I have two processes or two clients, P and Q, each exposing an, an A channel, which is the client protocol. And the question is how to combine them into a pool. Well, you can have this very straightforward derivation at the end of which we have the question of A, which is a client pool of A. Um, but one notable thing is that we used a mix rule, which is not standard in classical linear logic. And, it, and it's similar for creating an empty client pool from nothing. We will require a mix zero rule, which is also not standard in linear logic. And indeed, that's what Wadler and many others did to accommodate client pool using exponentials. But the story doesn't stop here. Gerard waivers on whether they should, they should be included in CLL because they are problematic. In short, MIX degenerated the multiplicative fragments of linear logic. And in particular, if we look at the MIX zero rule, it allows you to, con con to derive con contradiction from the unit. This is obviously bad from a logical point of view. So using exponentials to represent client-server doesn't work out. And we are going to find out why with the help of fixed points. We often think of band A as infinite supply of A and question A as consumption of that. It is therefore very natural to try to encode them using fixed point. Indeed, this encoding gives a logical equivalence. Now, if we flip the multiplicative connectors in the encoding and get another set of modalities, which we will call co-exponentials. And uh, the question is, what's the difference between these two kinds of modalities? And is co-exponentials useful at all? So let's compare the two sets of modalities. In the encoding of exp exponentials, a server is either nothing, a single A, or two sub-servers connected by a tensor. Now, remember that, as we mentioned, Tensor represents disjoint components, so there can be no communication between the two subservers, hence it can be a stateful server. In contrast, in the encoding of co-exponentials, co we have the two subservers connected by par, which represent connected concurrency. There can therefore um, be com com communication between the two subservers, which forms into a stateful server. So it, it seems that co-exponentials are more suitable than the exponentials to represent client-server. Indeed, our slogan is K means client and Claro means server. We, are, um, we derive some rules from the fixed point to make it more usable. And to introduce non-determinism, we quotient some permutations such that the order of which clients are added to the poles does not matter. Finally, here is our system, Client Server Linear Logic. It's based on this public 2019 paper and uses hyper environment to decompose C terms of classical processes. Um, tensor and cut rule are copied from the public 2019 paper. The K weakening, the K absorption, and the clutter rule are essentially identical to the three rules in the previous slides, but with term assignment. Our system comes with a reaction relation that satisfies progress and preservation. Now here is an example of what can be done in our system. CAS is a powerful and common concurrency primitive, formally defined as such. Uh, here we consider CAS of a single bit for simplicity. 
we can use server to represent a cache capable register and client pool to represent threads racing to perform a cache. And the client pool, sorry, and the client protocol will be defined as sending expected value, sending desired value, receiving the result of the cache operation and ending the session. And of course, the, the, the server protocol is the dual of that. At some point, we realized that CSLL is a very low level language and it's tedious to write programs in it. We therefore made a high level language CSGV, which is linear functional programming with session types and client servers based on Waterless GV. In CSGV, we are able to write more examples. We define the server of data structure to which each client has atomic access. We define the choice process that returns zero or one randomly. We implemented fork join parallelism. Finally, we implemented Kinney's beauty contest where each client votes for a candidate and hear back the result in a single session. These examples demonstrate that our system allows some degree of sharing and non-determinism while being deadlock free. In the related works, all previous CLL based approaches had to use mix, except this paper by Kalka, Morris and Dwadler, um, where they use um, bounded linear logic to model server and client. However, in this system, a server can only serve a, an exact number of clients, which is quite restricted. There are other two approaches, namely multi-party session types, where multiple parties of um, each rule interact with each other according to a global protocol. This is, of course, different to our system where there are only two rules, namely server and clients, and the number of clients is variable. There is also Kobayashi's who, who added type system to a pi calculus in pursuit of good properties. They, however, didn't aim for any connection to linear logic. Finally, our co-exponential rules are very similar to some of the exponential rules in differential linear logic, um, but we are not sure about the connection. There are several future topics to look into. First, our Clara rule derived from fixed point is apparently a generalized version of a supposed co-promotion rule, which is um, supposed to be symmetric to, be, to the promotion rule and still be useful for logic. We attempted to weaken it or specialize it to, uh, to match the promotion rule, but encountered some issues in co-elimination. Uh, in particular, it's some commuting conversion that wouldn't work. Another future topic is to develop a logical relation toolkit for CSLL or CLL in general. And this could be useful for proving, for example, strong normalization for the systems. So uh, there are many syntactical proofs of termination of CLL, but as far as I know, there hasn't been a logical relation proof.